all our iniquities for healing our, our diseases. Let's thank him for his grace and mercy. mercy. Let's, Let's thank, thank the God, God of heaven, heaven because, because his, his mercy and grace know no boundary. boundary. Let's, Let's pray for him even this morning. I appreciate him. I appreciate him. Thank, thank him for redeeming your life from destruction. Thank, thank him as well for crowning you with love and compassion. compassion. Thank him for his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. Thank him as well because it was that sacrifice that has given unto you a new hope and a new life. Open your mouth and pray. Thank the Lord for his benefits that are very countless, they are innumerable. Thank him for his love and joy forever. Thank the Lord for his guidance. Thank him for his protection. Thank him for his provision in your life and that of your family. Open your mouth and appreciate God. Even this morning, it's only the living that can praise God. Appreciate him for keeping you still on the land of the living. Bless the name of the Lord for lifting you up and carrying you on his wing of love and strength. Appreciate him, thank him for his presence in your life that has become your greatest treasure. Appreciate God this morning. Worship God this morning. Thank God this very day is worthy of our praises. Is worthy of our thanksgiving. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We want to pray this very morning. We want to commit our Father in the Lord unto the hands of the Lord. We want to pray that the Lord will uphold him. Amen? The Lord will strengthen him more. Amen? And the Lord will keep him for us. Open your mouth and commit him specially unto the hands of God. Pray that the mighty hand of God will rest upon him for good. And pray as well that his righteous desire for this church globally will come to fulfillment. Let's pray for him. It covets our prayer. It desires our prayer. Pray for him. Let's pray that God will continue to bless him with divine approval ministerially. That his ministrations, wherever he goes globally, will be loaded with signs and wonders. Talk to God about the man of God or for our generation. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We are going to pray for all the vessels that God has preserved to use for us this very day. And there are so many. Right from our children's section to the youth to the campus and all the other ministers that God used to sing unto us, the choristers, the ushers, the security, they are so innumerable. Let's pray for them that God will use them for his own glory, that the mighty hand of God will rest upon them, open your mouth and commit them unto, unto the able hands of God, that God of heaven will use them maximally to the benefit of his kingdom. Let's pray for all these instruments. In Jesus' name we have prayed. A louder amen. Last Wednesday, the 12th of June, we all went out in all our various groups for neighborhood evangelism. And that program was a resounding success. But then, we want to pray that all the converts that the Lord has given unto us, they, they will abide. Let's open them out and pray for all these converts that they will abide, that none of them will, will be lost. Let's pray that the Lord will uphold them in his righteousness. Let's commit all these converts unto the able ones of God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We, we, we all know that it's not just only to go out and preach. We have a duty to play. We have a part to play. And let us pray that on our own part as members, as workers, as leaders, that we will be up and doing in the follow-up and the maturation of all these converts. Let's pray that God of heaven will grant unto us the willingness, the wisdom, and the divine blueprint to carry out this assignment of following up all these converts. Let's pray they will all abide in Jesus' name. Let's pray that none of us will slack, that this soul that God has given unto us on a platter of gold will remain in faith. And the honors lies on us to go as well, to follow them up. Let's pray the strength, the ability, the wisdom, and all it takes for us to make sure that these souls are grounded in the kingdom. 
God will give unto us. Open your mouth and pray for all these converts. That the mighty hands of God will rest upon each and every one. In Jesus' name we have prayed. This is another week of our power night. As we know, on Thursday, we'll be having the power night, this, the June edition. I want to pray. It will be a power night indeed. It will be a time that every stone that has been blocking the progress of the people as the man of God mount the pulpit, all those stones will, will be rolled away. Stones of disease, stones of, of, of depression, stones of sin. Let's pray. It will be a power night indeed. This coming Thursday, let's open our mouth and commit the program unto the able hands of God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. This time around, we have gathered here this morning. We want to pray for the grace to obey the message. The songwriter says, when his message comes to you, it's not an objective message, it's Message that has only one answer. It says, just obey, just obey. In the book of Joshua, 24, verse 24. And the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God, we will serve, and his voice we will obey. We want to pray that ours will be in like manner also. That our coming here will be a blessing to our soul. Will be a blessing to our spirit. And that God will give us the grace to obey every word that we emanate from the pulpit even this morning. Open your mouth and pray. Say, Lord, help me. I don't want to just come here and while away time. I want to come here and listen and obey and do according to your, unto your word. Pray for the grace to obey God. Pray for the strength to obey God. Pray as well that the mighty hand of God will rest upon you for good even this morning. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You want to pray this time around? Our GCK is coming as well. And it will be coming this time around in Abuja. You want to pray, say, Lord, as you have been using your servant here and there, this time around will not be an exception. That your mighty hand will rest upon him. Let there be miracles, diverse kind of miracles. Let there be healing, let there be salvation, let there be de de deliverances. Open your mouth and pray for the man of God, even as he goes to Abuja this time around in this June edition. Let's pray. We want to, we want to hear more testimony, we want to listen to more testimony, we want to see more miracles in this global campaign of the gospel. Let's pray for him, let's pray for him. He needs our prayer as well. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You are here this morning. I know you have come here for a purpose, and that purpose is that you want to be blessed of God. You want to pray that, Lord, my coming here this morning will be a blessing to my spirit, will be a blessing unto my soul, will be a blessing unto my body. Open your mouth and commit your coming here this day that it will not be a waste. It will not be just to fulfill all righteousness. You are here for a purpose. And that purpose is to hear God's word, is to know the, the mind of God, and to do accordingly. Pray. Say, Lord, help me to do as you've been instructed. Because today you will listen to instruction, to correction, to admonition. Pray for grace. Say, Lord, as I'm here this day, help me. I will not gloss over your word. I will not push your word aside. The power, the grace, the courage, the ability to do according to your word. Lord, bestow on me even this day. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Tell the Lord, in Jesus' name we have prayed. I want to pray, brethren. Many of our brethren are still on the way coming. I want to pray for them now. God has brought you and God has brought me here. I want to pray. Say, God, hasten their steps. Bring them here in, in very good, in good time. That nothing will obstruct, nothing will hinder. If there are traffic, that Holy Ghost will go down and clear this the, 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 on the way unto them, and they'll be here on time as well. Let's commit them unto the ones of God. Let's pray for them that whatever may want to be a hindrance on their way coming, that God of heaven will knock such a way. That God of heaven will take such a way. Open your mouth and pray for all these brethren. As they are coming, they, they will come here, come here safely. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Finally, I want you to thank the Lord for answer to our prayers. God has answered us. 
In Jesus' name we have prayed. A louder amen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless holy name for this sweet hour of prayers. You are the one that has commanded us that men ought always to pray and not to faint. And here we are this morning, as a church, we have cried unto you. And we have the assurance that you have answered us. Glory and honor and adoration be unto your holy name in Jesus' name. Your people are here this day. Lord, I pray you will meet each and every one at the very center of their needs in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray as your word will be coming forth later this morning, the grace, the power, the courage, the ability to obey your, your word Lord, given to us in Jesus' name. We commit our Father in the Lord, the man you have ordained for this very hour, that your mighty hand will rest upon him, that as he opens his mouth, you will back him up, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for having answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. A louder amen. We will, we will remain standing as we sing together from our in book G H and S number forty four. Come over. There's a land of peace and plenty, and its gates are open wide. And the pure in heart and holy in its shelter may abide. It is not through gates of glory that a soul must enter in, but all who will find entrance there, there must leave the ways of sin. There is bread in heaven growing in its fair and fatter fields, and the wine of love is wired to the testing mortal yields. There, there are mountains of heights, mountain heights of glory that are where the travelers roll, and blessed retreats where empty souls draw nearer unto God. Who will stay without its borders in the desert dark and dry, when the luscious grapes of Eshcol are so very, very near? Enter in then with rejoicing, for the Lord is on your side, and in his glorious presence evermore you shall abide. Come over, come over to the land of corn and wine. There is nothing can compare with the many holy pleasures there. Come over, come over, leave the desert plain below and come away, away, come over.
Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads for prayer. A gracious God in heaven, we thank you very much for this wonderful day. Thank you because this is the day you have made. And we have come to rejoice and to be glad in each. As we have come to search the scriptures. I pray, Lord, that the scriptures will search our hearts. Whatever that is not right in any heart here this morning, as your word is coming, it will purge such a things away from such heart in the name of Jesus. Teach us yourself and bless our lives. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Good morning, class. Last week, Sunday, uh, last week in our various groups, district, and location, we look at the topic salvation, repentance, and fruit bearing. Repentance and fruit bearing. We learned that repentance is the central key in the Bible. What is repentance? It simply means that a sinner hearing the word repent of his sin, then turn away from his sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation come. Then after salvation, the fruits follow. The fruit that follows will give an assurance that such an individual is born again. And what are these fruits? Goodness, I mean, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. And today, we are looking at the subject, parable of the great supper. Our memory verse is taken from the book of Luke chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. Can somebody in the congregation recite a memory verse? Anyone? Anyone? Then said, then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper and bade many and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that we are bidding, come, for all things are now ready. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Can somebody, a fast reader, come up and read our text for us? Our text is taken from the book of Luke chapter 14, Luke from, chap from Luke verse 1 to 24. And it came to pass, as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that day watched him, that they watched him, and behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. And Jesus answering spake unto the law, lawyers and Pharisees, saying, it is, lawful, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? And they held their peace. And he took him and healed him and let him go. And answered them, saying, which of you shall have an ass or an shall have an ass or an ox falling into a pit and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day. And they could not answer him again to these things. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidding. When he marked out, they chose out the sheep rooms, saying unto them, When thou art bidding of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidding of him. And he that bade thee and him come and say to thee, Give this man place, and thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidding, go and sit down in the lowest room, that when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Then said he also to him that bade him, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, 
call not th thy friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors. Let they also bid thee again, and a recompense, and a recompense be made thee. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. And when, and when one of them that sat at the meat with him had this thing, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must need go and see it. I pray thee, have me excuse. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excuse. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and shielded his lord this thing. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the street and lanes of the city, and bring in either the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done, as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highway and edges, and compel them to come, in that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidding shall taste of my supper. Thank you very much, and God bless you. You see, parables are frequently used by our Lord Jesus Christ to pass some salient truths to his audience. Parables are stories from everyday life that reveal or relate and illustrate certain spiritual truth. Their uniqueness is found in revealing the truth to those who are spiritual, while at the same time concealing it from the unbelieving. You see, when you come to church or to any gathering where the word of God is being preached, and you deliberately close your eyes spiritually, or you close your heart and you refuse to receive the word, what happened? You will be a loser. But on the other hand, you open your heart, and the word comes, and it enters into you. You will be the blessed one. Look at this. In the book of Matthew chapter 13, open your Bible with me to the book of Matthew chapter 13, I read verse 11. He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you, to know the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it is not given. Verse 13. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seen, see not. Hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. During Christ's earthly ministry, he interacted with different kinds of people. The poor, the rich, the Pharisees, the publican, the learned, and even the beggars. And that teach us as believers that we should reach out to all categories of people in our society with the gospel because Jesus died for all. Our text opened with Christ's visit to one of the chief uh, uh, Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day. And there were some people right there watching, not to learn, not to hear the word from him and be saved, but they were watching for faults. They are false finders. Are there not some people like that in our midst? Who come not to hear the word? Who come not to listen to the word of God? and repent, but they are finding faults. Today, if you are there, my counsel for you is that examine yourself. 
and make a U-turn and hear the word, accept it, and believe it, and your life shall be blessed. This takes us to the three subtitles we are looking at in our subject today. Number one, Christ teaches and heals on the Sabbath. Number two, the call and invitation to grace supper. Number three, the consequences of rejecting the great invitation. Point number one, Christ teaches and heals on the Sabbath. In the book of Matthew chapter 12, open your Bible with me. Matthew chapter 12, I read verse 1 and 2. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were unhungered and began to pluck the ears of the corn and to eat. Verse 10, all through to verse 12. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days? That they might accuse him. And he said unto them, What, mine, what man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it? And lift it out? How much more? Then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. They could not answer yes or no because they knew there was no law against doing good on the Sabbath days. Question, what can we learn from the Lord's act of healing and teachings on Sabbath days? What can we learn from there? Anyone? What can we learn? If you are there, just come to the front and give us the answer. What can we learn from the lost act of healing and the teachings on Sabbath day? What we can learn is this, that the Sabbath is meant for man and not man for the Sabbath. God bless you. Thank you very much. No law that binds us that we should not do good on any day. During the earthly ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, he was moving from city to city, from village to village, and deal with power with the Holy Ghost, preaching, teaching, and healing, and doing good according to Acts chapter uh, 10, verse 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. In the book of Luke chapter 14, in our text, I read from verse 7. Luke chapter 14, from verse 7. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidding, were bidding. When he marked how they chose out the chief room, saying unto them, verse 8, When thou art bidding of any man to a wedding, sit not thou, in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thee, than thou, be bidding of him. You see, the Lord was teaching them. He said, whenever they are invited to a wedding ceremony, don't sit at the highest room, but sit at the lowest room, so that the master of the ceremony, the MC, when he comes, if that front room is meant for you, it will pick you from the back and put you at the front room and front seat. But if you sit at the front and the master of the ceremony comes and you are not supposed to be at that front seat, it will pick you up from there, it will take you to the back. And that would be a shame on that individual. The Lord is passing a message there. The message of humility. Humility. As leaders, I mean, as members, as workers, as leaders in the vineyard of the Lord, our service should characterize with humility. Whatever area of work, whether ushering, security, choir, preacher, 
whatever service we are rendering in the church of God should characterize with humility. Because God never takes the service of a proud person, arrogant person. We shouldn't be found in any of these vices as leaders, as workers, and as members in the church. Because the Bible tells us in the book of James chapter 4, verse 6. James chapter 4, verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. It is the humble that God will bless. The pride of the proud. The pompous, he will abase. That take us to point two. The call and the invitation to the great supper. Let's go back to our text. Luke chapter 14, verse 15, all through to 17. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed, is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God? Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say unto them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. This man in the parable of our Lord Jesus Christ has given the invitation to the group of many people, but they excuse themselves one by one. Number one excuse was that I have bought five yoke of oxen and I cannot come. The other one said, I bought a piece of land, I cannot come. The other one said, I just marry, I cannot come. Friends, the Lord has given us a great invitation in this church, and that is GCK. But we find out that many of our members and even leaders and workers, we don't attend. Great invitation that the Lord has given in this generation, GCK. And we are excusing ourselves, and we are missing out. You find out that people that are coming for the first time, they are the ones getting the miracles, getting saved and getting blessing. But people that are supposed to be the blessed people in the church, they are not there. I pray that God will change our action. And God will change our lives. And everything will be well with us in Jesus' name. They all give us to The Great Supper is a typical of the kingdom of God. Question. What are the benefits of having supper in Christ's kingdom? What are the benefits? Anyone? What are the benefits of having supper in Christ's kingdom? Number one, we enjoy the uh, 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 blessedness of eating with the Lord and admiring the glory of the Lord. And also, we will see Abraham, Isaac, and all the apostles in heaven. Thank, Thank you me. very much. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 14, verse 2 to 3, it said, In my father's house are many mansions. If you are not so, I will have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again, and I will take you unto myself. Where I will be, ye shall be there also. It is your response to the call of salvation here on earth that will determine your privilege of partaking in the supper of the Lamb in heaven. God the Father is giving you an invitation today in the book of Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. Let's look at it. Isaiah 1, 18 and 19. Come now and let us reason together. See the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like green sin, they shall be as wool. Verse 19. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the lambs. Jesus the Son is calling you this morning. Matthew chapter 28, verse 11. Come unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God the Father is calling you. The Son is calling you. The preacher is calling you. Come. Everything is ready for you. And if you reject this invitation, what will be the consequence? That takes us to the last point. Consequences of rejecting the great invitation. In the book of Luke chapter 14, I read verse 21. Luke 14, verse 21. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said unto him, Servant, 
go out quickly into the streets and lamps and the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the hot and the blind. In verse 22a, and the servant said, it is done. The question is, what can believers learn from the faithfulness of the servant in, their, in this parable? What can believers learn? Anyone? If you are there, just come to the front and give us the answer. What can we learn? We learn to be faithful and useful to evangelism. Thank you very much. Obedient to the master and to the great commission. You see, the consequences of rejecting the invitation of the Lord are very, very great. Number one, you will suffer here on earth if you reject the call to salvation. The call unto the Lord. You will suffer here on earth. Number two, you will suffer eternally. That is in hell. Because when Jesus will come to take his people home, you will be left behind because you reject the call. And the Bible says, how shall you escape if you neglect such a great salvation? Hebrew 9, 27 says, it is appointed unto men who wants to die after death, the judgment. Friends, where will you spend eternity? You have been in this life, you have been in this world, and you have been hearing this world, and you have come to church this morning. Will you go with your sins? Will you go with your burden of sin? Why don't you come to the Lord this morning and say, Lord, I surrender. All unto thee, I surrender. Where will you spend eternity? Let's rise up and talk to God in prayer. The great invitation is unto you today. Will you heed this invitation? Jesus the Savior, Jesus the Lord, is calling on everyone. And for us believers, let's wake up and do the, need, the work of God that he has given to us, evangelism. Let's move out and do everything possible to bring more souls into the kingdom of God. And for you as a sinner here this morning, the Lord is calling on you. Repent of your sins, turn away from your sins, and accept him, and believe on him, and he shall be well with your soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you because of your word that has come to us this morning. I pray for as many as are surrendering their lives unto you right now. Faithful Father, merciful Father, touch their hearts. Save their souls and bring them into the kingdom. And for us believers, I pray you will wake us up to this end time ministry of touching lives. As we preach the gospel, many sinners will be saved. Help us, Lord, as we continue, continue with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Not hearing you, hallelujah, very well. Praise, praise the Lord. If you have any question from what we have just learned this morning, please, um, you can rise up from where you are sitting, come to the front of the auditorium, so we can give you opportunity to ask your question. We also want to remind you that if you have any question, please go straight to the point and as well uh, keep to the study of today. Any question from the study we have just had now? Please, if you have any question, please rise up and come to the front of the hall. Our brother. Good morning, sir. Good morning. My, uh, 
question is taken from our memory verse. He said, then he said unto him, there is a certain man that make a great supper and bid many and sent his servant. Now, some people said the certain man is God and the servant is Christ. Some people said that the some people also say that the servant is the angel that God sent. And some people said he is Christian believers. I need a clarification. The man and a servant. A man and a servant. My second question is this. We saw that he sent the servant and they went out first. But the people that they were invited did not turn up and he said go to the edges and everywhere to bring the people and we saw that that servant was successful in bringing other people now uh, if there is someone that tried to go for an evangelism and he do all what he could and it wasn't yielding fruit. He even prayed, he fasted, he does everything. And the wasn't yielding fruit. Is there anything else for that person to do so that his evangelism outreaches can yield fruit? That is my question, sir. Thank you very much. If you look at that passage, um, Jesus Christ used a parable from the teaching that our pastor that has taught now gave to us. And it's an illustration of the heavenly things to us to make us to use things we can see, what things we can understand to illustrate to all of us about the things of the kingdom. Now, you are asking whether the certain man refers to God himself while the servant is um, either Christ, angel, or the believers. But I can tell you that one, um, the certain man here is referring to our Lord Jesus Christ. Is the one who has made the feast and everything is ready for us. The servant that is referring to are not angels. Is referring to we believers, the children of God. Um, that because he was talking to uh, the believers and talking to the other people that were around, he's talking to we human beings, not angels, and is actually making reference to uh, the believers. So those who are saying a certain man refers to God, of course Christ is also God. And he said, I and my father, we are one. So if it is the certain man is God, it could be Christ, could be the Father because they are one. Christ is God, the Father is God. And the servant here referring to is referring to those of us that have uh, actually met the Savior. We have surrendered our lives to Him and we have also committed ourselves to His service. And we have an assignment, the Great Commission, to go out, to go and preach the gospel to the sinners outside. And when the invitation is given out, the invitation of Christ to the whole world is, if you look at um, Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11, and I read from Matthew chapter 11. 
I read in verse 28, it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the general invitation to everybody, the rich, the poor, the educated, the illiterate, uh, whichever class you fall into, whatever status you belong to, the invitation is you come. It's for everybody. And that invitation is to every sinner in the world because Christ, the Savior, is around. Christ is the one that will give the salvation, the hope of heaven, the hope of the kingdom is around. He has given out that invitation and we are the one to carry out the gospel to every creature. That's why Jesus Christ now said we should go and preach the gospel to every creature. In Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 28, I read from verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power in heaven is given unto me, in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. That's now to the servants. Go out. Go and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, coming to your second question, you are saying that the, the, the servant, the believer, the soul winner, the one that has committed to go and reach out, to go and uh, give out the invitation, has done all he could do by preaching the gospel to the people, but uh, you realize that you didn't have any results. There is no response from the people you have preached to what will you do? Well, um, the first thing is that is obedience. Obedience is the first thing. You are going out to go and preach the gospel. That's the important thing. The, the, the command, the commission had been given to all of us. So the fact that you have obeyed to go, that is recorded in heaven. Because when you look at what Jesus Christ said in Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16, I read in verse 15, it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye and preach the gospel. Go out. Don't sit in the house. Don't say nobody will listen to me. Don't say I have tried before, I failed. No, obedience is the number one thing. You go out. But then, if you look at verse 16, it says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. For he that believeth not shall be damned. If you look at this verse, you will see two classes of people. That means there will be some people that will believe the gospel you have preached to them. Some will receive the gospel and they will be saved. That's what Jesus Christ said. In the same verse, Jesus Christ said, there is the likelihood that some people will not believe. Now, the fact that they did not believe did not mean that the gospel you have preached did not have effect does not have power, does not, uh, is, did not produce any result. And of course, 
let me let every one of us know that there are times when you preach the gospel and expecting immediate results. The results will not come at that moment. You preach, you made an auto call, or you ask the person, what is your decision? And he said, I have no decision at this point. I cannot decide for anything now. Then you are discouraged. But you may not know that that word of God has already penetrated into his heart. He might get to his house and start crying for salvation. And you may not know. And uh, to your greatest surprise, maybe one year, two years, or three years' time, somewhere, maybe in the worship service like this, you saw somebody that looked like the person you talked to. Ah, you said, this person, I think I spoke to you some years ago. He said, yes, and you didn't receive. He said, later, I went home, I had a conviction, and I surrendered my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you now come to realize that it wasn't a wasted effort that you obeyed to go and preach the gospel. But at other times, some other people, some are ready for the gospel right away. When you preach to them, their hearts are ready, their hearts are broken, their hearts are convicted, they have a penitency for their sin, and immediately you preach, they respond. Now, if you preach and they respond at that moment, they will be saved. Thank God for that. God will be glorified. If you also preach and they did not respond at such a moment, thank God, God who knoweth all hearts knows how to deal with all people. And that shouldn't discourage you and to say, since I went out on a number of occasions, therefore I didn't get any result, I am not going again. I'm discouraged. No, you shouldn't do that. There was an American preacher some years ago. He went to India for, to go and preach the gospel. He prepared very well and uh, did all the publicity that needed to be done. And then he went to the crusade ground. Nobody turned up for the crusade. A popular preacher, a popular evangelist, well known. And then he went home discouraged, but he did not give up. At another time, he went. And the same place he went before and got failure, when he went back again, he now, the people that didn't turn up the other time, multitudes of people now came out to receive the gospel. So don't get discouraged. But anyway, if you have gone and preached the gospel and you didn't get the results immediately, you go back to God on your knees. Because the heart of man is under the hand of the Almighty God. He turns it so whithersoever he wills. And we can only get the heart of men to submit to God when we pray for them so that their heart will be softened, broken, and penitent to be able to receive the, the gospel. If we just go ordinarily, what we know in our head and all that, the gospel will not have an impact on the sinners. It is when the sinners, when we are going out, we have softened the ground, we have softened the hearts of the people through prayers, and probably fasting before we go out, that's where we get the necessary result. And so what is this is telling us, that is the number one thing is obedience to the gospel, Go out, the, uh, um, the feast is ready, go and preach the gospel. Obey the Lord. Don't get discouraged if you didn't get any result immediately. It might come later. Even if it doesn't come immediately, it might come later. God knows how to use his word to talk to people even when you, the preacher, has gone. He has a way to finish up the remaining work. Let's, let nobody get discouraged because you fail maybe at once or second time. Keep on preaching. One day, the Lord will give you a breakthrough. Praise the Lord.
Let's rise up quickly and pray as we commit ourselves into the hand of the Lord at this time. And the important thing today is that we should really do right, do good on the Sabbath day. The, we shouldn't be like the Pharisees that are such uh, people that are only fault finders. They come to the house of God. They come to where they're supposed to listen. They come to crusade. They come to programs. Ordinarily, when they should have opened their heart, they themselves had their, had their own problems, challenges, but they didn't open their heart. They were just uh, there uh, looking, the, is it today that Christ is going to heal or another day? Should it be another day or should it be now? Don't be like that. Christ is here available at this moment of time to reach you. When you come, come with an open heart, a true heart, and come with a sincere heart, not for fault finding, picking a mistake or whatever grammatical error or this supposed not, not to be done the way it's done. You are not the one to decide how things are supposed to be done. God has already arranged everything. Open your heart and receive. On a Sabbath day, we are asked to do good. We are asked to also, if we see people in need, we should be of help to them on the Sabbath day. We shouldn't say, because it is a Sabbath day, we, should, uh, we will not do anything good, anything right before the Lord. Then, on a Sabbath day, it's a day to preach the gospel, proclaim the gospel to the others. It's a day of the Lord, a day of worship. It's also a day to pray and seek the face of God for anything you need from the Lord. The teaching also this morning talks about humility. Whenever position seeking is very dangerous, let the Lord raise you up. He that exalted himself shall be abased, for he that abased himself shall be exalted, lifted up. Don't always put yourself forward to be in this position or to occupy that uh, uh, place. The Lord knows what is right for you. Humility is what the Lord demands from us. The Lord also teaches us that we should have a heart for the poor and the needy. We shouldn't only be inviting our friends whenever there is need. We should have a heart for the needy, for the poor, in anything we are doing. Also, in our service today is obedience to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we do, pray with all our heart, the Lord will bless us. God is ready to bless you and bless me this morning. What the Lord demands from you from, um, and from me is obedience. And if we do, great will be the blessings for each and every one of us. Our dear Father, we just thank you because you are the God of all power and God that has prepared your kingdom for everyone. You don't want anyone to be excluded from the kingdom. I pray that those who have been vacillating between two opinions all these years, whether I should accept the invitation of Christ or not, this morning, Lord, open their hearts to receive the gospel so that they will find themselves in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. And those of us who are in the kingdom, let's give us the heart of obedience to obey the command of the Lord to preach the gospel to every creature. Lord, help us in all things. As the service progresses, let your blessings come upon every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.
say, behold, I freely Jesus, hearing him call me his own, just feeling at home, feeling at home, putting my feet right on the rest table, knowing I won't be alone, just feeling at home, feeling at home. Just feeling a home. Feeling a home. I'm feeling a home. We're feeling a home. Feeling at home. Praise the Lord. We shall be singing now from our in book, G H and S, number two five four. Lower and lower. Lower and lower, dear Lord, are thy feet, seeking thy spirit, thy mercy so sweet. Down in our need, blessed Master, we fall. Lower and lower. Be thou all in all. Lower and lower. Dear Savior, we pray. Loosen the self life still more every day. Weak and unworthy, we are looking above. Empty us, Jesus, then fill us with love. Lower and lower, yet higher we rise. Lifted in Jesus, led unto the skies. Humbly we follow the way of the cross, then crowns of glory and gain for all lost. Lower and lower, down at thy cross, all the world's treasure, county but dross. Down at thy feet, blessed Savior, we fall. Lower, still lower, Christ all in all.
we remain standing as we sing together GHS 200, the 90 and 9. There were 90 and 9 that simply lay in the shelter of the fold. But one was out on the hills far, far on the hills away, far off from the gates of gold, away on the mountains wild and bare, away from the tender shepherd's care, away from the tender shepherd's care, Lord. Thou hast here thy ninety and nine, are they not enough for thee? But the shepherd made answer, These of mine has wandered away from me. And although the road be rough and steep, I go to the desert to find my sheep. I go to the desert to find my sheep. But none of the ransomed ever knew how deep the waters crossed, nor how dark was the night that the Lord passed through. Ere he found his sheep that was lost out in the desert, he heard his cry, sick and helpless and ready to die. Sick and helpless and ready to die. Lord, whence are those blood drops all the way that, that mark out the mountain track? They were shed for one who had gone astray, ere the shepherd could bring him back. Lord, whence are thy hands so rent and torn? They are pierced tonight by many a thorn. They are pierced tonight by many a thorn, but all through the mountains thunder Riven and off from the rocky steep, there arose a glad cry to the gate of heaven. Rejoice, I found my sheep. And the angels echoed around the throne. Rejoice, for the Lord brings back his own. Rejoice, for the Lord brings back his own.
Amen. We want to go to God in prayer now. As we remain standing. In Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knewest not. We want to pray this very morning that the Lord will reveal himself afresh unto us. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, say, Lord, I'm here. Reveal yourself afresh unto me. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now it's time to give our tithes an offering. In Proverbs 3, verse 9 and verse 10, Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of thine increase, so shall thy bands be filled with plenty. Thy presses shall burst out with new wine. I want us to raise up the substance we have brought this morning to give unto the Lord as we pray now. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. Out of the abundance that you have given unto your people, they have brought this substance to give unto you. We ask and pray, you bless and sanctify in Jesus' name. And we ask, O oh Lord, use this offering and tithes for the expansion of your kingdom here on earth. Thank you, Lord, for having answered. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Our ushers and our leaders are passing the bags around. Please drop your tithes and offering and remain in the mood of prayer. Prayer for the nation. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34, righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people who want to pray that the light of the gospel will shine upon every nook and corner of our nation. Open your mouth and pray that the evil in the land, call it banditry, kidnappings, unknown government, and ritual killings, and the likes will be completely wiped out. Let's pray. In line with, with the words of the psalm, it says, Oh Lord, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. We want to pray in our nation. Every act of the wickedness of the wicked will come to an end. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We know that our GCK edition for June is coming forth. From 27th of this month to 2nd of July in Abuja, Gokwalada, to be precise. We want to pray for an unprecedented move of God's power anointing to save, to heal, and to deliver, and to set the captives free. Open your mouth and pray for the GCK edition of this month. In Jesus' name, we are praying. We want to pray for our Father and the Lord. In Exodus 33, verse 14, and he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. We are, we are going to pray for him now that he will continue to enjoy God's abiding presence as it's traversing the length and breadth of the continent Africa and beyond with the gospel campaign in this global crusade. Let's pray that God will bestow on him greater anointing, higher anointing. Open your mouth and commit him to God in prayer. Let's pray as well for the entire membership of this church that we will be source of encouragement unto him. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We want to pray for the church now. In Matthew 16, verse 18, he says, I say unto thee, thou art Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. We want to pray for this church, that every hellish gate that has been mounted against the progress of the church in this country and globally, that God of will, 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 will arise now and crush every such gate. Open your mouth and pray that the church of God will be moving forward, that for us as a church, it will be upward ever and downward never. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now you are here this morning. I believe you have not just come to a while away time. I want to pray for yourself now. In, Matthew, in Mark chapter 10, verse 51, and Jesus answered and said unto him, What would thou that I should do unto thee? And here, the addressee, that is the blind man, the, he said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. I want to pray, be specific even this morning. God is asking you that same question. What will thou that I should do unto thee? Open your mouth and tell the Lord, be specific even this morning. 
In Jesus' name we are praying. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this sweet hour of prayer. We have tabled the request before you. And we have that assurance that you have answered all. Glory, honor, adoration be unto your name in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for having answered. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You can be seated. Thank you. You are all welcome to this combined worship service of service group one, which comprises of brethren from Agege, Ajegule, Alimosho, Bagada, Ketu, and Shomolu, all district in Jesus' name. And we want to specially welcome some people here even this morning. Who are they? They are our convert from the GCK, and as well, the convert that God gave unto us in our last Wednesday, June 12th, evangelism, neighborhood evangelism. Want to